Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of ABJ News. My name is Olisi, the son of Nube. Uh, today we take it a bit higher. Uh, we have in the studio uh, President Lavel Walton. He is the president of the United Global Kingdoms of Africa. We want to hear what this is all about. You will know that this channel is not only targeting Zimbabweans and South Africans, but all members of the black race all over the world. President, welcome to this show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. How are you, sir? I'm good. Uh, United Global Kingdoms of Africa. What are we talking about here? So what United Global Kingdoms of Africa is, is an, uh, I would best say it's an answer. Uh, it's an answer to a lot of prayers for the return of the diaspora back to the continent of Africa, the place in which they were taken from. Uh, it is a bridge, to say the least, a bridge between diasporas returning, which would be the uh, the reuniting, uh, as well as the you know the return or the reconnection would be the second as well, the reconnecting with our brothers and sisters on the continent. So, UGKA is a uh, collaborative, a diplomatic collaborative, or a governmental entity similar to the United Nations, uh, but specifically for the uh, the Bantu people or the people of Africa, the children of Africa worldwide. Okay, when you talk about the return, are you talking about the physical return or are you talking about just the other part that you've spoken about, the reconnection? It would be both. It would be both the physical return as well as a spiritual or cultural reconnection with our uh, with our own people on the continent. Okay, So uh, absolutely a physical return. Okay, considering the, we know the way that Africans were taken, shipped out of Africa to all these other continents. Uh, and mm -hmm. there is a lot of... Uh, Disconnection, let me say, uh, some of these, we don't know, for example, where a certain person would have been taken from because we now you called Lavelle Walton. Obviously, that is an adopted name uh, mm -hmm. due to the circumstances that your grandparents or your forefathers were taken out of Africa. Is it easy for you to say, okay, I'm a Zimbabwean, I want to return to Zimbabwe? Do you have this connection with your history? Well, for myself personally, I do. I know a lot of people do not necessarily. For myself, my ancestry goes all the way to Gabon, to the Ateke people, uh, in Congo. And so uh, that's my ancestry. But for many others, it would be different. It would be from Nigeria or from uh, Rwanda, from South Africa, from Zimbabwe or Ghana or wherever else. And so we do uh, look to try to partner with organizations such as uh, your African ancestry or ancestral uh, or ancient ancestry or ancestry.com, you know, these different types of organizations that can assist with things like that. However, uh, one thing that we have learned, or I know I have learned living on the continent for the past year, it has been uh, that all the people, even though we are divided and we were specifically divided since the Berlin conference in the Congo, uh, but, Many of us uh, who are Bantu derive out of the Congo and we're scattered into the different regions on the continent. And uh, then the Berlin Conference with the division of the different lands and causing it there to be a, a Zimbabwe uh, uh, separate from Zambia or a Uganda separate from Tanzania, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, because of that division, we now look at one another as you're from this country, you're from that country, when in realization uh ancestral wise and by blood we're all bantu and all sub-sahara africa is 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 bantu scattered all over so the idea for for me is to, or for ugka is to get our people who are from the diaspora just come back to sub-sahara africa we connect ugka will connect with the different countries and then just to try to uh um, remove the help to remove the barriers uh economically and so forth Yes, you, you've already spoken about the physical uh, disconnection that we have as per, mm -hmm. you've spoken about the Berlin Co Convention, which the Berlin Conference, which divided Africa physically, but also uh, mentally we are divided. I'm in South Africa, you've been to South Africa yourself, and I think you've heard a lot about the xenophobia that happens here. Africans mm -hmm. are disconnected even mentally. We believe that if a Zimbabwean has to come to South Africa, it has to be a Zimbabwean who's got the money, a Zimbabwean who's going to start a big conglomerate company and start employing Africans. Mm -hmm. If this Zimbabwean has got no money and is looking for employment, then it becomes an enigmatic figure who should be treated in all these 
prepared sort of ways. Uh, how is UGKA, I mean, going to make it possible for these Africans that were taken out of Africa to come back to Africa, especially due to the disconnection that we have and the hate that we have among Africans? Yeah, well, without divulging too much information, because we do have a, a big event coming up this Sunday, actually, uh, our global our webinar global webinar summit is actually yes. happening this sunday uh 5 p.m south africa time 8 a.m pacific standard time um and people can easily register at ugka.org so just go to ugka.org and you'll be able to register right there for free it's uh seats are filling up very fast but yes. uh i think a lot of the questions that a lot of folks will have uh much of it can be answered there but uh, to give a little bit to uh, what you're asking, I think the, the biggest thing that we are focusing on as far as from uh, our departmentally is through our education and humanitarian or uh, people services, customer, co you know, community services, if you will. Uh, our education is, is very huge in that decolonization is the first start. Decolonization of all curriculum is going to be the first start in waking up all of our Bantu brothers worldwide and our sisters to be able to see that we are not so different just because you come from Zimbabwe. We shouldn't yes, be looking yes. at you from a xenophobic <laughs> xenophobic perspective saying, oh, you got to start business or you're just here to take jobs. But more so that opportunity exists beyond just uh, 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 the borders. Yes. You know, we have to be able to see that, you know, there are other big cities uh, in Botswana, Gaborone, you know, you can go to Winhoek in uh, Namibia. There's other cities that where business and opportunities can exist. But I think in order for something like that to happen, uh, there must be a reunification of the, the Bantu on the continent and the Bantu in the diaspora. Okay. Um, that is an interesting, uh, it's an interesting idea. Um, now, looking at an African who is living in America, you've been called, first you were at some point, you were called a colored race, you've been called all these sorts of names. Now you are being called African Americans. This speaks to <laughs> yeah. a lot, a lack of sure. true identity. Now, yes. can you tell the people who are living in Africa who want to go out there how difficult it is to be a member of the black race who is considered to be a citizen of these countries, which uh, we've seen America with Trump, for example, they are taking this right wing approach in which a black person is, can be called anything. We hear stories about uh, black Americans being mistreated in America. We saw the issue of, uh, is it George Floyd? We saw the mm, Black Floyd. Lives Matter. We, we've seen so, some of these things. Can you briefly tell a black person who is in Africa how a black person is treated there in the in the so-called developed world? Yeah, you know, they. Um, <laughs> that's a long story, but I'll, I'll shorten this up. <laughs> your your skin is your sin. Yes, pretty much in America. You know, if you're black, it doesn't matter if you're from Africa or you even look like you're from Sudan or you look like you're from Benin or wherever. It doesn't matter. Your skin is your sin in America. It's simply because you're black. You know, that's a huge issue. But that's not the only issue. That's not the only reason. Uh, a lot of it is because of who we are as Bantu people. Uh, that specifically speaks a lot to our heritage and our history. And uh, it is known in some regards uh, over in America. So, uh, but overall, your your skin is your sin. To be African American basically simply means to be African with no memory, and to be American with no privilege. Yes. So you have to you have to really think about that for a lot of brothers and sisters looking to go to the West or go to UK or Canada to these different countries. Some may be a little easier, not not as stressful or not as a uh, dangerous as the US, but there are some areas in the US that's not so dangerous, it's not so bad, but overall your all the odds are stacked against you because of your 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 skin. So with the George Floyd, the Breonna Taylor, the Mike Brown, uh, yes. Ray Shard, uh, you know, Stephen Clark. I mean, you count Trayvon Martin even being a youngster, uh, and so on and so forth. These the names, the list just can, keeps can going on and on. And you have to weigh out: Do you really? And there's countless people who didn't even make the public list. 
who have died because of police brutality or even countless people because of uh, um, community violence, you know, black on black crime, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, all the odds are stacked against you. And most people who come from the continent go over to America just to make money. You have to weigh out. Is it how important is that to you? You know, yes. and, and I'm not a, against anyone going to America <laughs> to stack up their money. I'm not against that at all. Yes. You know, I understand it. Just. Just weigh the pros and the cons and be careful, because in America, your skin is your sin. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I ask this is because when we are here in Africa and we look at America, we've got this sense, I mean, we've got this belief that there is no division in America, <laughs> is the, the heaven of this earth. And the next question is, <laughs> how does UGKA hope to bring back black pride? I'm no longer talking about uh, blacks who are in America, I'm also talking about blacks who are still in Africa, who don't value being black. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, as I stated before, education is the biggest thing. The second part would be uh, economics. You know, um, I don't know. Have you ever heard of the story of Black Wall Street? That's part of the educational aspect. Then Black Wall Street is also the economic and the technological advancement. And I think everything that we had done in America with Black Wall Street, we have to now duplicate all over Sub-Saharan Africa, all over Africa, period, from Egypt to Morocco, all over Africa, it needs to be duplicated again. And what what we had done is uh, our our uh, uh, our Bantu people when in 1863 the Emancipation Proclamation happened. That was when slavery was so called abolished. Yes. But two years later, two years later in 1865, um, the 13th Amendment came in. And what the 13th Amendment was basically stating is, even though you are physically free, yes. if you commit a crime. You're in prison, but they didn't say for how long. And many of people were still doing work, slavery yes. in prison for a very long time, even to death. Um, but if you notice something very significant in 1905, uh, so 1863, uh, slaves were set free. And all the way to 1905, there was a brother named O.W. Gurley who yes. went over to a state called Oklahoma and in this city called Tulsa. And he purchased during this land run, he purchased a lot of land over there and he called it the Greenwood District. Right. Yes, yes. But now from 1905 to 1921, it was burnt down. 1905 to 1921, it was burnt down. Yes. That is about 15 to 16 year difference. Right. Yes, yes. That means they built and they, they put yes. they had about 600 businesses. Let me see. They had about 600 businesses. Uh, bus system, six private airplanes, 21 restaurants, uh, churches, schools, uh, public transportation, air, school bus system. They had a whole lot of things going on during that time frame, 15 to 16 years that it was developed. Yes. And the way I look at it is what could be done in Africa with 15 to 16 years? Yes, yes. If we all came together and it starts with the return of the diaspora, we need the children of the diaspora back with all the skills, all the knowledge, everything that they've learned and coming to transfer those skills, sharing those things with our brothers and sisters on the continent, while our brothers and sisters on the continent teach us or remind us of cultural value and heritage and history and traditions that are that are valuable. Right. But yes. overall, in order for all this to happen. Everything has to be under the, the the banner or the the wisdom, the guidance of our Creator, the Most High. So Nini Nani. Nini. So yes, that uh, I believe has to be the process. Uh, we have a serious problem in Africa. I mean, in Africa, I think you already know that the problem yes. of good leadership. We lack good leadership, and it's not because people here are not creative. People are creative. People are so determined. They are hardworking. They are trustworthy. But because yes. of the people that preside over them. We cannot run away from that. We lack good leaders in Africa. How do you, how does UGKA hope to even prevail over this kind of leadership? Because you bring your skills here, you bring your money here. The next thing is, because you are not powerful politically, it's gonna be driven down. It's gonna you're gonna be frustrated. Let me say. How do you hope well, to balance this? <laughs> I'll tell you uh, something I learned living in America um, is really not about having a political advantage. Yes. Uh, politics are dictated by uh, economics. Who owns the economy? Who runs the money? Yes. 
in in the time that we have black wall street the black dollar or, or the monies that were that black people had circulated 36 to 100 times before anybody purchased anything outside of the black community yes 36 to 100 times that money was constantly rotating in the black community that means i'm spending my money with you you're spending your money with me and with this brother or with that sister everything is circulating right yes. so now in america the black dollar lasts about six hours so from 36 to 100 times circulating now just the six hours of time not even a full day right what that means is the the people who are in power who are the, the, the colonial powers, the elite, yes. right? Who are still running Africa politics, right? They control the economy. They control the dollar. And if you control the money, you can control the politics, the laws, the policies that are put into place. So what we're looking at is why not all of us begin to come together and work together again and develop our own economies, yes. build up our own dollars, really start growing. So the way I look at, uh, uh, kind of um for lack of a better word suppressing the 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 uh the the corruption is number one building relationships i think relationships is everything yes, you know yes. uh, building relationships with these leaders number two is being being able to share that vision and seeing if they're on the same page if they are wonderful let's work together if you're not not a problem we move on yes we go work with someone else we're not going to waste time or play around with you we respect you your decision and your views just as we know that you respect our decisions and our views so if you're if we can't seem to come together so be it we move on but i think that a lot of the leaders uh who people on the continent say are corrupt from this country to that country i think a lot of them will see the value in all of us coming together and collectively building up some things i mean you see it happening uh all over uh the african union au with these conversations from president yes. rudo to Museveni to many others uh not only uh, uh, uh kufo so 